Okay, again, I'm Andy Rose. Um, tomorrow we'll be doing uh, live commentary on Saturday and Sunday on Channel 20. For those of you that were out there, we've now completed the uh, the uh, round robin and the quarterfinals in this. And in match racing and modern match racing, the winner of the uh, of those rounds uh, goes into the semifinals and gets to pick his or her opponent. So I want to introduce Chris Steele, who uh, has won the uh, the first two. Uh, Two rounds here and done a terrific job. He looks like he's been sailing these boats forever, and in fact, he hasn't. So, uh, at any rate, let me introduce Chris, and Chris is going to make his pick right here on live TV. <laughs> you can say whatever you want before you make your pick if you want. Okay, um, we are going to race uh, the team that plays fourth, which I believe is AJ from San Diego. Very good. So, tomorrow's semifinals will be the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron with Chris Steele versus A.J. Ryder from San Diego Yacht Club. The other semifinal will be our own Ryan Davidson from Balboa Yacht Club. Uh, for members here, I think since we've been having semifinals in this series, we've never even gotten anybody in the semifinals. So we're... And Ryan's going to sail against Sam Gilmore from the Royal Freshwater Bay Yacht Club in Western Australia. Uh, Sam comes probably from the, if not the best, uh, one of the best match racing families that there ever was and has shown uh, last year Sam was only one point out of uh, out of making the semifinals. Well, this year he not only made the semifinals, but was extremely close with uh, Chris here. There was some great racing. So I think both those semifinals will be terrific, and we'll hope for a little more win tomorrow, but, uh, but that's sort of the deal. So I'll tell you what, instead of what I told you we were going to do, why don't we have, uh, why don't we have AJ come up, uh, come up here right now? Come sit over here. All right, so we have our first semifinal here. So let me let me start with AJ. So flip the microphone button up there. So AJ, um, your performance in the first round, Robin, was shall we say um, modest. How the heck did you? Yeah. How the heck did you uh, win all those races today, and and bounce into the semifinals? Well, uh, we stopped focusing on match racing and we started focusing on making the bow go through the water. Uh, we realized we realized a fast boat is a happy boat, and uh, you know, without my teammates, this wouldn't be possible. But we just started making sure that the boat was moving, and uh, then we focused on the other boat. So that's actually, you know, boat speed sort of. <laughs> if, if you ever sail in the America's Cup, I think there's only been one America's Cup ever where arguably the slower boat won, and that's still an argument. Um, <laughs> you know, there is nothing like speed. Um, I'm sorry they're not here now, but we're being. Uh, actually, the next two days will be filmed by Gary Jobson's team, and if you haven't seen what Gary produces as far as yachting videos, it's incredible. But Gary was the opposite tactician to me in the America's Cup, and, you know, we would just pound him at the starts, and then they would just pass us. But anyway, so, Chris, how did you figure out, you've been sitting with your crew um, less than a year, I believe, with this crew? Uh, I think it's our sixth day together, actually. Sixth day. <laughs> well, that's quite a bit less than a year, isn't it? How did you, what kind of training, you know, I, I know, don't say it, don't say it's because of your coach, Guy Piltington, but what, what kind of training, how is it that you guys can sail together for six days and come out, you, you look, from what I could see, you look comfortable in the breeze, you look comfortable in the light wind, how, how does that happen? Um, yeah, we're quite fortunate, we have a, a really good match racing program, well, fleet racing as well, program back home at um, the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron, run by Guy Pilkington, and it's called the... Uh, Lion Foundation Youth Training Program, and there's about uh, 35 to 40 of us that get out every weekend um, and race, and anywhere between five and 40 knots of breeze. Um, so we, we get a good, good range back home. Um, and then I was fortunate enough to, to get over here a week earlier without my team. Um, I flew straight over from Bermuda, and I had some really good training with um, Jack, Jack Thompson, and, and his dad also, Phil, gave me a lot of help. So um, it was really cool sailing those boats um, beforehand. And then when the boys arrived on the first day of training, um, you know, we linked up really well together and um, yeah, everything just clicked. So, so far so good and hopefully we can uh, continue to improve as we're starting to feel more and more comfortable each day. All right. So now let me ask you about your choice. You knew I was going to ask this, didn't you? So you chose AJ. So AJ, you know, doesn't have, didn't have as good a record as Ryan, but boy, he had a much better day. You know, so how, a lot of times when somebody is sort of starts to streak towards the end of a series, is that really who you wanted to you know, sail against here. <laughs> I think, um, well, some people can look at it as advantage of choosing who they want to race. Um, I think in some cases there's no real right answer, which um, I think we had today. Um, 
you know, we got four strong teams in the semi-finals, and I think there's um, even a couple of other really strong teams that could have made it as well. Um, I think the, the lesson that we've learned is it doesn't matter who you're racing out there this week, um, you make one mistake and, and anyone will punish you for it. So, um, you know, we've, we figured we'd better not shoot ourselves in the foot and pick second or third, because um, the logical choice is always fourth, and, and um, you know, it just happened to be AJ, so um, hopefully it doesn't <laughs> come back to bite us, but I don't think um, there was any other way we could have done it. I, I agree with you. That, that choice is a, it's a tough one. It's like the unintended consequences can be terrible sometimes. Um, AJ, is there any, you know, there was a relationship. You started out, we had some breeze, a lot of breeze the first day, pretty good breeze yesterday, not much today, and today was your best day. Was there any correlation there, or did you just get, you guys just got more in sync and got better? Well, in the light breeze, we're pretty fast, probably because we're about 115 pounds underweight, uh, which helps a lot, right? Uh, but I mean, we just started getting more comfortable, just like Chris was saying. You know, he got he got to come out here a little week, a week early and start getting used to it. And uh, after talking with uh, Nevin Snow, who used to represent our club for this regatta uh, for a while on Tuesday, Wednesday night, uh, we just started trying to change our mindset all together and uh, working together. We started hiking harder, which helped. Uh, Coach Steve told us we weren't hiking hard at all, so... Could you say that again for my crew on the big one? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's starting to yell at me to hike, too, and so, yeah, you know, Oh, well, yeah. just tell him to... Yeah, yeah, not gonna do that. <laughs> I mean, we're just... We're just, uh... Changing our mindset a little bit every day, but finding, uh, what works and sticking to it, so. Great. Okay, um... I think that's uh, that's probably enough from you two. Uh, congratulations to both of you. I think it's uh, we are looking forward to this, and I agree. I think any one of the semifinalists on any given day could uh, could have been in the uh, you know could win this thing. So this should be a very exciting two days to come. Thank you very much. Let's have the other semifinals. All right, Sam Gilmore on my left and Ryan Davidson on my right. I I hate to tell you, Sam, but I think most of these people are rooting for him. Can you handle that? You're probably right, Andy. Yeah. It seems like it's a bit of a crowd favorite, uh, Ryan. But, um, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. So, Sam, last year, one point out of the semifinals. This year, uh, easily in the semifinals and almost the top boat. What, uh, what changed? What's different? Yeah, I think another year of match racing made a big difference for us. I think last year was one of our first match racing regattas, and we had Jay Griffin sailing with us, who taught us a lot, but... This year, we've been sailing for the last year, done a few whole bunch of regattas down in Australia and New Zealand, and that's definitely helped, and I think the experience of us being together will definitely be something to count for tomorrow. How long have you guys, have you sailed with this crew? Uh, well, we've been sailing, the three of us, with others probably for about a year and a half now. Um, the Bauman, Adam, Negri, we sailed 420s when we were used as well, so we've been sailing for four or five years. So. All right, great. So, Ryan. The most successful Bobo Yacht Club contender in, oh, I don't know, 20 some odd years. As I, as I always say to Ryan, no pressure though. No pressure. So, you had, you, you seemed, you, I think you beat him in the, in the round robin, right? In the first round robin, but otherwise you were not, unable to beat the other two semifinalists. So, how do you change that before tomorrow? Um, I think we learned from all of our mistakes that we made. Uh, racing against them, and we know where we messed up, and we worked on those mistakes in our other races going for uh, going uh, further. So, do you think both of you, I think, have from what I could see, have excellent crew work? So, I assume there's no worries on either part. So, when you lose a race, it really is you, huh? Yeah, basically. <laughs> hey, just checking. I, you know, I don't want to see any mutinies on court tomorrow, anyway. So, what um, do you have, uh, either one of you? Um, you know, Sam, you did pretty well, you know, no matter what the wind conditions. Are you pretty much comfortable in all these wind conditions? Do you prefer it a little lighter or what? No, definitely we're comfortable with anything. Uh, I think the light, uh, sorry, the windy stuff definitely plays for our strengths because back home it's pretty windy. So we definitely prefer that the first day. It was good fun. So, yeah, we're hoping that we get a little bit more wind, but I think Newport's known for not having so much. So. <laughs> That's just a vicious rumor. Um, so Sam, one more question, I'll go back to Ryan, but what, um, tell us about your race. We didn't stay long enough because I had to go get my makeup on and stuff. What, um, tell us about your race with, uh, with Chris. It was the last race of the quarterfinals. Yeah, we actually had to have a resale after the first one. We got a big wind shift, so 
and then we started again. Um, the second one, he managed to come out on top off the start. We had a bit of an issue with that tide that was out there, which I'm not quite sure what was going on. Yeah, you know, I, I noticed that the spare boat was anchored there, and the spare boat was lying like uh, 95 degrees to the wind. So there must have been something going on out there. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely interesting. I don't think we've sailed in this uh, wind direction before in Newport, so it was something different. But yeah, the race went on, and we managed to gain all around the race course, and we, we felt quick, and by the finish, we were right on this hammer, and fortunately, just a few rash uh, movements by us, and we got a penalty on ourselves right on the finish line, so he managed to take the win, but we're definitely confident with how we went today, and being able to catch up from such a big deficit, we're really happy with. All right, great. Ryan, you had, uh, I saw your race with, uh, with Chris uh, in the quarterfinals, that the start was, was really, you know, very good. I mean, a lot of aggression on both sides, uh, and you actually got a penalty on him, which was, I thought, boy, that's, you know, that's pretty good stuff. Uh, but then, as you you started and were able to actually leave out him and pinch him off at the start, but unfortunately, you forced him to the left, which was just huge. What what happened that race, and how how do you think, you know, in a southerly, as you know, probably better than any of these people, southerlies tend to be a lot more shifty. So how do you deal with that? How do you avoid that happening? Tomorrow. Let me ask you first, did you know that the left was favored you couldn't get there, or what? I think our initial game plan going into the race was to fight the current first, yep. and unfortunately it didn't pay off for us. Um, the left, as you said, was very strong, and we noticed that halfway up the beat, and we couldn't get back left when we had our chance. But yeah, I think right after the start, actually, once you both tacked, it looked like both boats fell in a hole, but yours was a much bigger, deeper one, so you were just stopped there. So. All right, well guys, I think this is going to be a very exciting semifinal. I encourage all of you uh, to get out on the spectator boats tomorrow. Uh, we want to hear a lot of cheers for these great teams. And thank you all for listening. And uh, be sure and listen to uh, Gov Cup Radio tomorrow on Channel 20 uh, out on the water. And good luck to both of you guys. Thanks, okay.